G'day guys, Mac here with the Outer Circle, and this week in Getting Started in 30k, we're looking at the Iron Hands Legion. So, Iron Hands, this is kind of a tougher Legion to pick the units for because they're very vehicle centric. Where other Legions have jump packs and bikes and that kind of thing, um, the Iron Hands love their tanks, and because of that, well, the tanks, they're forge world, they're expensive. So I've tried not to use too many, but, well, I kind of have anyway, so do forgive me. Anyway, quick points about their rules. First of all, they have this rule that's called Inviolate Armor. Basically, any shooting that's made against any unit with the Legionnaires Astartes Iron Hand Special Rule gets, uh, the weapon is at minus one strength against them. So, like, a crack missile, for example, becomes a strength seven which means it can't instant kill two wound models. So, yeah. Pretty strong, uh, obviously doesn't apply in close combat and doesn't apply against the vehicles. Next rule they have is the stand and fight, which is all Iron Hands units must pass the leadership test in order to make sweeping advances or run, and they can't choose to go to ground voluntarily. Yeah, not really an issue. Most of your units are gonna be leadership nine, leadership 10, uh, you're not going to want to go to ground very often anyway because most units will be riding around in vehicles and or they'll be in terrain already so you know kind of a basic bitch pointless rule uh, rigid tactics they can't contain more units of jump infantry bikes or jet bikes than they do any other infantry type um, not really a problem because you're gonna have a fuck ton of tanks so yeah who cares, bikes and jet bikes, you'll rarely take them. Um, not to say they're not strong, Iron Hands jet bikes are incredibly strong because you basically only wound them on sixes. That said, eh, got better shit. Uh, last thing, they have a special HQ uh, upgrade type for their Praetor called the Iron Father. Very similar to what the Iron Warriors get and basically your Praetor gets a servo arm, get a six plus feel no pain, uh, little things like the Battlesmith rule, can't use a heap of different equipment like jet bikes, jump packs, bikes, but you know you'll be having him in Terminator armor anyway, so it's not really an issue. Um, when it comes to special war gear, you've got a couple to pick from. Only a couple. There's the Cyber Familiar, which gives you a plus one to your invulnerable save, or a five plus if you don't have one off the top of my head fantastic upgrade that people often will take on forge lords you can take it on any character model that's sergeants even within your army so you could have in theory five plus invulnerable save on a tactical squad sergeant breaches could have a four plus invulnerable save in close combat maybe a five plus out of close combat then you've got um your praetors and that kind of thing if they've got an iron halo or cataphracty armor then they can have a 3 plus invulnerable, which makes things like the Champion or the Chaplain very strong units. Uh, much better in tanking and assaults. The other option that you've got is the Blessed Auto Simulacra, which is a 10 point upgrade for vehicles, and you get to roll a d6 each turn, and on a 6 you restore a hull point that you've already lost in the battle. Can't take it above the starting number. Uh, very, 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 very situational. Um, not something I'm really going to recommend. If you have that and you have Ferris Manus in the same army, then you can combine it with It Will Not Die, which gives you two chances to regain a hull point or that kind of thing each turn. Then I'd say it's pretty worth it because, you know, you're going to be pretty strong vehicles. Um, just quickly before I go into the building of the army, there is a special character that pretty much makes it out into every single Iron Hands list, and that is Castraman Orth. Now, the deal with him, unlike the other special characters who I won't go into, is that he actually is like Sergeant Kronos in 40k's Ultramarines, in that he actually rides in a tank. So he buffs the tank, gives it like an invol, gives it better ballistic skill, tank hunter type stuff, all that kind of thing. So people who buy an Iron Hands army, I do suggest making a sort of 
Castroman Orth special character type model that you can use throughout your army somewhere if it so suits you. Don't have to, but just free advice, it'll probably come in handy later on anyway. So, let's get into the nuts and bolts of it, shall we? First of all, the Iron Hands Iron Father. This is a lovely miniature. Um, yeah, not much I can really say about it. It's just beautiful. So, comes with a big fat servo arm, and he comes with a power axe. Now, of course, thankfully, he's armed with a shooting weapon on the right hand side, which means you can comfortably change out the left handed weapon for anything you like, which makes it really friendly. Um, you can give him a power fist, cut the top of the uh, axe off, and make it a thunder hammer. You could even count it as a Paragon Blade, since a Paragon Blade could be any type of weapon, pretty much. So it's up to you what you do with him. Uh, you could also use him as a Forge Lord or Master of the Forge with uh, Cataphractic Terminator armor. Like All these things are just off the top of my head you could do with it. But basically, this covers so many different job roles. If you build a list, you just buy one. You'll find a use for him in most lists. This is obviously a top tier character, and if he's in cataphracty armor, which is an option, you can give him a cyber familiar. Hey, he's got a three plus invulnerable save. And you're only gonna wound him on fives with bolt guns. So he's a tough, tough cookie. Another good one is the Tech Marine in Mark III armor. Now this guy could run him as a Tech Marine, could run him as a Forge Lord or Master of the Forge. Um, could run him as a siege breaker even i got i think siege breakers and servo arms kind of just work together like i just imagine them using the servo arm to load shells and but yeah pravian pravian console is what you want to use this guy as and hand in hand with that mechanicum caselex battle automata i've chosen the dark fire cannon here because it gives you some strong ap2 firepower uh, very handy for mopping up enemy terminators and also good at killing those sort of light to medium vehicles and Little bonus Because the Pravian they can take the Iron Hands Legion rules, which means shooting at them is at minus one strength Ergo strength four cannot hurt them because their toughness seven Yes, you can be invulnerable to bolt guns Is it Cruel and unusual? Yes. Is it fucking awesome? Yes. They are a distraction carnifex. They're something you walk across the middle of the battlefield and the other guy just doesn't know what to do about it. So he starts throwing really valuable firepower at this unit rather than shooting things he probably should be worrying about. Uh, yeah, just brutal. Pravian with Casalic's Battle Automata. You can equip them with power cores. You could give them multi melters. Go with the standard more pattern bolter. It doesn't really matter what you arm them with the fact that bolt guns can't hurt them makes them terrifying to people and that never underestimate the psychological element of this game now here's a funny one every list i do i say take a contempt dreadnought take a contempt dreadnought i went looking on the forge world website i can't find it i'm assuming the iron hands contemptor is just no longer in production because it is not anywhere i did a direct search and everything for it so if anyone can tell me where it's kind of gone, I'd, I'd like to know. Um, but yeah, this is the original Iron Hands uh, Contempt Dreadnought kit. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but as always, it's better than the shitty Dreadnought in Betrayal at Kelth. If you do take one, I'd suggest probably going with Twin Kiri's Assault Cannons, just so you can take out aircraft. You don't really need the AP2 combat mincing power of this guy in this army because you have so much other good stuff that you can take instead. He is entirely there for anti-aircraft duties. Speaking of AP2 mincing close combat stuff, Legion Gorgon Terminators. So basically imagine normal Terminators, make them a tiny bit more expensive, like 5 points, now give them all feel no pain. Now give them all a decent invulnerable save. Give the sergeant a cyber familiar so he has a really good invulnerable save. Oh, and then make it so that shots fired at them can actually bounce back. Oh, and give them all the option of taking things like thunder hammers. And you start to get an idea of what Legion Gorgon Terminators are like. Then you're 
pretty bloody strong and of course being iron hands bolt guns only win them on fives never underestimate that this is a whole army has jet bike levels of toughness so yeah gorgons of course my suggestion would be to run them with the iron hands forge father or iron father or forge lord or whatever you want to run him as but run him with the gorgons and you're gonna have a good time Our last elite slot today, Graviton Cannon Rapiers. These are vehicle killers, and more than that, they are a weapon that I never see used because they're actually pretty expensive in points, which makes them good for filling out your points in games. These leave a large blast template of difficult terrain which remains in play for a turn when they're fired. This is really good for reasons I'll go into in a minute, but when you do hit a vehicle with it, it actually causes a haywire hit. So on a two plus, you cause a glance, and if you roll a six, you cause a penetrating hit. Now you're not gonna one-shot vehicles because you're not AP two, you're AP four or five off the top of my head. It's not important because it never really comes into play. Um, but yeah, three of these bad boys, two turns to reduce a Spartan on average. So yeah, well worth it because no Spartan is gonna be, unless they get first turn, they're not gonna be on you within that two turns. You've got a 36 inch threat radius and your toughness 7, oh and it's minus 1 strength in shooting against you. That doesn't apply to the artillery piece itself, but the squad average toughness is 7, so pff, yeah, works out for them alright anyway. Um, yes, yeah, so regarding the actual template left over, I like to use it to sort of control my enemies and funnel them. So if I see a Spartan loaded up with like Red Butchers or something, really terrifying unit, I fire this at them. Turn 1, knocks 3 hull points off it. Turn 2, because it doesn't care that your armor 15 equivalent with your flare shield. Turn 2, the Spartan dies, and then all these nasty cataphracty armored Terminators are left standing in the ruins of it. In difficult terrain. And then they have to go through difficult terrain with slow and purposeful armor. It slows them right down to about four inches movement each turn instead of a guaranteed six. You can use it to slow down Primarchs and that kind of thing. And if a Primarch is being slowed down by it, people sort of get a bit annoyed with that. And they, they start doing silly things like detaching the Primarch from their Terminator bodyguard. And that allows you to, you know, kill the Primarch um, or kill their bodyguard, in which case you only have to deal with the Primarch. So it gives you options. This is one of those real strategy based weapons, maybe not for beginners, but I think it's worth including now because if you can master the tactics of the Graviton Cannon, you will really get a lot better at playing Heresy. So let's go on to the difficult part now, let's let's talk troops. The Burning Prospero box gives you all the Mark III armor you could wish for. It also gives you a bit of Tartarus Terminator armor if you want to use that in your Legion. Um, the Mark III armor, of course, perfectly Iron Hands. As you'll see, the Iron Hands specialist units, they're in Mark III armor. Very stylized, but Mark III nonetheless. My personal advice is to only use the Iron Hands Legion Tactical Squad for like your sergeants or maybe veterans. Uh, big, big thumbs up for using these guys as veterans because they're just so over the top and they come in so few poses, so limited poses. Um, you don't really want to be using the same models throughout the army because it just starts to become too uncanny valley, too similar over time. Plus it costs a lot more money. Just fill out all your infantry with Mark III plastics. If you want to go to town on them, use some upgrade sets, use some helmets, maybe use some torsos. It's up to you. Speaking of which, one of the units shown here is the Medusa Immortals. You don't need to buy them, they're just more here for demonstrative purposes, but they do make pretty good breaches, and if you're going to buy breaches for Iron Hands, you may as well just buy these guys, because then you can use them as Medusa Immortals in another game, or just regular breaches if you want. Up to you, they just look fucking cool. So, heavy support, let's get to it. First up, Dimos Vindicator Laser Destroyer. I take a squad of three of these in my Thousand Sons. They are ridiculously brutal. Uh, 
upgrade one of them to a command tank and you gain tank hunters and I think monster hunters as well. Basically what happens is someone puts down their tank on the battlefield and then you put down three of these and then you overcharge them at 36 inches range and you proceed to fire nine strength nine AP2 shots into them. Actually no, the laser destroyer so AP1 uh, with the ordnance special rule and yeah, basically absolutely fucks up enemy armor. <laughs> uh, I've taken down knights with these very comfortably in one to two turns. Uh, two turns guaranteed, one turn maybe 50% of the time you'll kill a knight with them. But yeah, they're fucking fantastic. Uh, very pricey on points, but again, a good way for a starting army to fill out their points, a squadron of three of these. That's instantly like 500 points just gone. Backing that up, of course, the Achilles Alpha Pattern Land Raider. I probably wouldn't give it the multi melter sponsons, I'd probably go for the Volkite sponsons because the Volkites just give you a lot of anti infantry firepower and equipped with the Thunderfire Cannon, which generally will be firing at infantry. You can make good work of like the Horde armies, um, you can even give big tactical squads a bit of a run for their money. So, well worth the investment. And of course, you can upgrade the Thunderfire to Phosphex rounds if you have a Siege Breaker, but that's neither here nor there. Nasty vehicle, awesome in an Iron Hands army. Lastly, the Spartan Assault Tank. I would have gone for a Land Raider Proteus or a Phobos, something like that. Just as a transport vehicle, the limit of 10 just handicaps Land Raiders so much in Heresy. Great for tactical squads and Terminator squads without characters. But the thing is, we're running Gorgons with a Forge Father in this list. So you want to have him with that squad, you want to put them in this vehicle. He can use his servo arm to fix the vehicle as they go, put any hull points back on it. And when they charge, they'll hit like a fucking tank. Forgive the pun. So I'm going to give a couple of options now for sort of making your legion your own unique little legion. When it comes to upgrading the vehicles, not everyone feels free. Um, feels that freehand painting or using decals is really their thing. They don't feel confident with it. And that's fine. First, there's these Iron Hands Legion icons, which give you like the Iron Hands symbol, little ferris marker, that kind of thing. These are pretty simple. You just stick them on doors or on the front hatch of your vehicle, paint them up. That's all there is to it. You don't need to be a genius of pain to get that done. There's also the etch brass option, which gives you more icons, but they're a lot, a lot flatter in detail. Um, probably a little bit harder to paint for a new person and a little bit hard to work on because the tabs can be a little bit difficult to fully get off without leaving like a little, little bit sticking out the side, like a mold line. But done right, looks fantastic. And of course, the iron hands have an excellent transfer sheet. Um, I have one of the old transfer sheets and one of these new ones. I like a lot of things about both of them. Neither of them is perfect. This is perfectly acceptable. It comes with plenty of icons for squads, for different clans, for vehicles, vehicle names, banners, all sorts of stuff you can do with it. So well worth the investment. So to summarize, Iron Hands Iron Father, Tech Marine in Mark III as a Pravian, with three Mechanicum Castellax Battle Automata attached to him. A Contemptor Dreadnought, preferably with Twin Curies Pattern Assault Cannons. Legion Gorgon Terminators. Legion Rapier Graviton Cannons. A Burning of Prospero Box. Maybe upgrades for veterans or for your tactical sergeants. Maybe breaches. Legion upgrades. Again, if you want them on your sergeants or to make miniatures stand out or to upgrade even HQs to look more like iron hands. Same with the torsos. The Dymos Vindicator Laser Destroyer for all your anti tech needs. Um, the Achilles Alpha Pattern Land Raider. The Spartan Assault Tank. That's your force. Use it wisely. Now, obviously, there's a big emphasis on armor in this list. Um, here's my little caveat. 
a lot of the Iron Hands Rite of Wars revolve around armor, which is pretty obvious, right? They're Iron Hands. You can outflank with tanks with one of your key Rites of War. So think about the impact that vehicle squadrons especially can have with that and the ever-looming threat of things like the Castalax and Pravian walking across the battlefield combined with outflanking armor. It can really throw the enemy for a six. Um, they're never quite sure what target to prioritize. So if you go for Iron Hands, just I'm not saying you have to play them as a tank heavy army, but keep it in the back of your mind. That's how they do sort of play best. Um, that's what their strengths are built towards, geared towards. And if you have that mindset going forward with making your purchases, you won't need heaps of infantry. You don't need to paint tons of infantry. In fact, one of the more attractive things about Iron Hands is that you just get to focus on building and painting tanks. And for some people, that's just a wet dream. So anyway, that's Iron Hands in a nutshell. Any questions, queries, doubtful points, people playing at home know where that line comes from, feel free to hit me up in the comments below. I'm Mac with the Outer Circle. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.